For those who don't know or who have never heard of it, Zebrahead was a movie released in the fall of 1992 starring Michael Rappaport, who is most notably remembered from True Romance. Why don't you get out of my beer, right, and get a fucking job? And Deep Blue Sea. Carter, cut the crap, you're scaring everybody. And it also starred Nabush Wright, who is most remembered for her role in Fresh. Oh, this nigga's straight up lying to you. And Dead Presidents. Power to the people! Even though Zebrahead focuses on Rappaport's character, Zach, and Wright's character, Nikki, and them dealing with obstacles of trying to be a couple in a divided Detroit, that's not what this video is about. This video is about the black best friend trope. Of course, this trope has been talked about extensively in the past few years, but with this movie, I'm going to take a different approach. Also, I want to say if you haven't seen Zebrahead, spoilers are ahead. Some of the most iconic black best friends include Dion from Clueless, Bubba from Forrest Gump, and even Annie from Imitation of Life. I know, I know that we love these characters and they are, well, iconic, but they also fit into a box. They're only there to either assist the protagonist, then you'll have a 20% interest in the Art Delilah Corporation, to have an expositional conversation, everything to convince them of my scholastic aptitude, but I was brutally rebuffed, to make the main character a better person, because I'd made a promise to Bubba, and I always try to keep my promise, or comedic relief. Eric, I'm gonna put you in all my come place. On, come on, man, oh. come on. <laughs> <laughs> While watching Zebrahead, I couldn't quite pinpoint why D, Zach's childhood best friend, got on my nerves so much until I watched it for the second time and realized that he fits the mold of the black best friend. The reason why it took me a second watch to realize this is because I was so confused on how this trope could be in a black movie. You see, usually the black best friend trope only shows up in white movies, so this kind of surprised me. In Zebrahead, it felt like most of the characters played a certain stereotype. Nikki's friends came off like the regular hood girls with attitude. Fuck up, no, like you gonna give any bitch her respect. Shut up, bitch. Fuck you, ho. Nikki was placed as the other. She stood up for herself, but was sensitive and feminine. She gave me like Jada Pinkett Smith vibes, how she always kind of plays the same person in the hood movies, you know what I'm saying? Well, Pinnell showed me what's up. And? Is that something to be proud of? They had the bullying troublemaker who was supposed to be the bad seed. Thought I told you, the next time I see you, I want to see you with your parents. Where's your mother? Where's your father? How many times I gotta tell you? And even a hotel being a character from the suburbs. About the drums, the drums are African. We created drums. But by far, D was the worst character to me. Before I get into D's character, first I have to get into his best friend and discuss Zach. Zach was a Jewish boy who loved hip hop and black culture. Of course, this conflicted with a lot of the black students at his school. He would use AAVE and sell mixtapes with some of his favorite rap songs to his classmates. I would understand if Zach was a product of his environment, but he wasn't. He would listen to the music, use AAVE, and then go back to his side of town after school. His character plays a fine line on cultural appreciation and cultural appropriation. When Dee is first introduced, he and Zach are tossing around a classmate's notebook. When Nut, who is supposed to be the troublemaker, grabs the notebook from Zach, Dee decides to jump in and help his friend. It gets so heated between Nut and Dee that the principal breaks it up. Of course, Mr. Hotep confronts Dee about this. He asks him why he was so quick and comfortable to talk down to Nut. You don't have to put up with that nigga's bullshit. Yeah, I do. Bust it, where you live? It doesn't matter where I live. We're all African. You live in a white neighborhood. You don't have to deal. So don't give me that we all African bullshit. Because of this interaction, it's clear that this is not the first time they've had this conversation. After school, while Dee and Zach are hanging out, Dee starts freestyling, and what he says is so telling to me. Yo, my name is Dee, and this is Zachary. I'm in the front, he's in the back of me. Yo, people say, yo, Zach, you act too black for me. But yo, I like the way the brother acts to me. <laughs> When Dee asks Zach if he knows about Reverend Calvin Butts and his efforts to cover up alcohol and cigarette billboards aimed at black people in 1990, Dee was clearly irritated by that. I get that his reaction to this conversation could very well be that he's a teenager and doesn't want to hear about this again, but it seems like Dee doesn't like to discuss race when Zach is around. Dee's father brings up how Zach needs to be mindful when he comes to the black part of town because he has no choice but to be mindful when he goes over to the white side. For the most part, it seemed like Zach was receptive to this conversation opposed to Dee, who clearly doesn't want to hear it. 
While they're at a family barbecue, Dee and Nikki's family start discussing her relationship with Zach, and this is when Dee gets upset. Nikki's mom brings up that Zach could be using her and that them being in an interracial relationship comes with a lot of problems. This scene is so frustrating to watch because Dee seemed to not want to acknowledge or have an understanding that throughout history, black men and women have been fetishized and hypersexualized since slavery. When the parents bring up that it would be harder for Nikki and Zach as an interracial couple, Dee gets even more upset, even though it's true. When Zach takes Nikki to a house party on his side of town, his friends decide to pull him to the side and ask him racist questions about Nikki. Zach didn't shut them down and Nikki overhears everything. She calls him out and it's like finally. What about you? Man you want to be so different. You ain't no different from them just because you walk the walk and you talk the talk. Just because you, you you listen to the music and you and you think you know about the culture it doesn't mean a thing. When Nikki tells her cousin Dee what happened, he gets a little upset, but then he defends Zach. When Dee is talking to Mr. Hotep, he makes the excuse that black men diss black women, so leave Zach alone. Seriously? Go to hell. When Dee finally confronts Zach, Zach makes excuses. He says that it wasn't his fault and that that's how guys talk when they're together. Dee shuts him down, which I'll give him a pinky amount of credit for. But then Dee flips it on Nikki and says that people make mistakes and if she can't see that, then she's not worth the trouble. You know Nikki's your cousin, right? The fuck? I feel like Zach is only comfortable saying that to Dee because Dee never stands up to him about anything. And he always comes to his side like his savior. While at the skating rink, when Nut starts getting aggressive with Nikki, Zach decides to jump in and help. This is when Dee jumps in, which is a direct reflection of when Dee jumped in when Nut and Zach were arguing in the cafeteria at the beginning of the movie. This trait that Dee seems to have is usually categorized as the white savior trope but I guess in his case you can call it the black savior trope. Him feeling like he always has to take up for and protect Zach just felt wrong. I understand that that's your best friend but he's the same age as you. He can take care of himself sometimes. D jumping in causes him to get shot and killed at the skating rink. I felt like D wanted to maintain and even push the mindset that color shouldn't matter and race shouldn't play a part in his friendship and Zach and Nikki's relationship but that's just not reality. I feel like you can have best friends of another race and still discuss racial identity, cultural appropriation, and interracial friendships with them. These seems to think if you ignore it and never bring race up, their racial differences will go away unnoticed, when in reality, that will never happen. If he actually had a conversation with Zach and was like, yeah, I know you love AAVE and our music, but you're on the fine line of cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation. As long as you don't use our culture inappropriately, profit off of it, or try and take something and rebrand it as your own, then I'm cool with it. I know this type of language wasn't used in the 90s, but you get what I'm saying because honestly while watching this movie I feel like Dee didn't think it was possible to be friends with a white guy while also embracing and being comfortable with discussing race. I also want to add that outside of Dee's character and a few other things Zebrahead is a really enjoyable and interesting romance movie so I think everyone should watch it. Luckily I found it on YouTube and I'll be posting the video link in the description below. I want to say thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it so much. Bye. Yeah, but it